I was browsing my local Craigslist in search for a new laptop. I found one for a nice price. It wasn't great, but hey, it would get the job done. I sent the seller an email and then headed off to work. On my break, I checked my phone and saw I had an email. It was the seller, 240 for the laptop, cash only. He said, can we meet later today? We agreed on a place and a time to meet. I was the first to show up, but he wasn't long after me. I looked over it and made sure it worked, and everything checked out. I handed him the money and we left. When I got home, I booted it up and downloaded Linux OS to replace Windows 7. While it was downloading, I took a look to see if it had anything left on it. It was completely clean, but it was already set up. I'm assuming because he needed to reinstall the drivers. If I could go back, I would. Once the download was done, I felt too lazy to reinstall the OS, so I just hopped on my desktop and left it alone for the night. Around 1am, I got hungry, so I walked out of my room into the kitchen, got a bagel and put it in the toaster. I was checking my phone while I waited for it to get done. After it was done, I threw it on a plate, turned around and walked back. And that's when I saw, outside of my kitchen window, a mask. A mask leering right back at me through the window. He held up a knife and cut through the screen. I yelled at the top of my lungs. The window was open. I heard him jump through my window as I booked it down the hallway, running into my room and slamming the door shut and locking it behind me. He started aggressively banging on the door. How he didn't break through it, I'll never know. I grabbed the gun out of my closet, which is nothing to brag about because it was just an old 22, but I'm not going to be picky in a situation like this. I loaded it and called 911. The second operator picked up and I yelled, there's a man in my house, please send help. I dropped the phone and pointed the gun at the door. He was still trying to get in. He sent one major kick, knocking the door slightly off its hinges. I fired a shot into the door and that's when he stopped banging. It was quiet. I was shaking with fear. I just stood there with the gun pointed at the door. The door slightly moves and I yell, I'll shoot again, don't try it. Then someone yells, it's the police, put the gun down. I set it down and they forced the door open. As they walk me out of my room, I look down in front of my door. I see a pool of blood, so I guess I hit him. They take me outside and sit me down while they search. One of the officers was questioning me about what happened. I told him everything. He asked if I knew of anyone who would do this. I said not that I know of. While the cops were searching, one of them comes out with my laptop, saying that someone had reported it stolen. I said that I had just bought it that day. I pulled out my phone and showed them the emails. They agreed that I didn't steal it and that someone just sold me a stolen laptop. They did take it with them, which was a bummer. I stay at my friend's house that night, and the next day, I get a call from that police officer who questioned me. My friend then walked into the room and saw me wide-eyed and shaking. He asked if I was okay, and I didn't answer. The cop told me that they found spyware on my laptop. The person who sold it to me was tracking me. They backtraced the guy and found him. They connected him with a few other killings. They wouldn't tell me what he did to the others, saying it would only freak me out more. I don't want to know what would have happened. I'm just glad I'll never find out. Last June, my boyfriend and I were living with our roommates and our two kids. Our roommates decided to leave, and they only gave us a three weeks notice on a month-to-month -month lease. We were already planning on leaving in a couple of months, but with this short of a notice, we decided that we just had to find a place somewhere, anywhere. Luckily, we both worked remotely, so we had the ability to move anywhere in the state. For two weeks, we searched on every rental site on the internet that we could find. This eventually led us to Craigslist. We had multiple rejections from landlords who weren't willing to work with us on a deposit, which was understandable. However, one was open to the idea. She was a nice older woman in the state with an approved realtor profile. I googled her. The house was perfect. It was a side-by-side -side duplex, which would be fine for a little while. It had a cute little kitchen and a backyard. The crime rate didn't look too bad and a school was close by. She accepted large dogs, which was perfect, and the deposit wasn't too high. After some researching online and talking, we made arrangements to move into the home. When we left our old home, we took off to finally see what the new one was going to be like. We dropped off the kids at my mom's house for safety's sake and went on our way. The drive was awful. We were lost left and right and even nearly ended up in the wrong town. Eventually, 
we were able to find an ATM to pay for the rent and deposit. After getting lost and yelling at each other on the freeway for another 45 minutes in the middle of absolute nowhere with limited reception and having to find a place to call her, we lost reception again, but we eventually found the gate where she met us to let us in. Something was off immediately. She seemed fidgety and nervous. She didn't look like her pictures. She kept wiping her nose with her sleeve, saying that she was sick. She was a little older and maybe looked like she had been on drugs at some point or maybe even still. We went through the gate and drove about a half a mile down to her home. Apparently, her office was also her home, which I didn't know. The property was filled with old trucks, boats, and buses. It was like a graveyard for oversized vehicles. My boyfriend, who was completely frustrated, looked at me in his failed attempt at humor and blurted out, Well, we're either going to get a house or we're going to die. Let's find out. We parked and met the woman outside. She seemed really anxious and was telling us random things about her many projects. I assumed that she was a tweaker. Sorry, but that's just what I assume and it's common in an area like this. We went inside the house, which strangely was well decorated and very modern. The rest of the house was a little trashy. She claimed that her office was flooded and we just have to sign the paperwork there. We agreed. My boyfriend and I signed the paperwork, but when we realized that we were missing 200 bucks, he felt secure enough to leave me to go check the car to see if it was missing. She went on to tell me about the house and the arrangements. The key to the house was by the light outside. They said there's a washer and dryer in the garage below, but we don't know anything about that. But you might not want to go down in there. It might be kind of icky. They also said that there's a crawl space where someone can get in. I'm not sure what they were talking about, but just said to be careful and make sure it's okay. She was incredibly adamant about not having been in the home in quite some time. I realized that this is the part where I should have definitely paid attention, but it was such a chaotic day and I was so exhausted that I just said, okay, sure, and I shrugged it off. I just wanted to get home. My boyfriend came back and she said that the missing amount was fine and that she would just tack it on to the next month's rent. We thanked her and went on our way with the new lease in hand. We picked up the kids and drove another hour to the home. The entire drive, we were watching the miles down to the town and counting down 15 miles, 10 miles. Then we arrived. It was an old three-story building duplex, not a two-story, but a three-story. The town was eerily depressing. It literally looked like 1983. There were mullets and 1980s tank tops, children playing outside while their meth addict parents smoked on the porches and chugged cheap redneck beer like water. It was hot, but the sky was dark and gray. Even the power lines were hanging down and about to fall. There were drug addicts walking around and small children playing outside. Other children were playing by themselves, running their bikes through the streets unsupervised. This was definitely not Mayberry. That beautiful yard had grown into a jungle. The duplex was practically abandoned and nobody was living on the other side. My boyfriend and I looked at one another with a sense of dread. Is this it? I asked. This is it. This is where we live now. He grabbed the key by the light and we walked into the house. It was worse. The floor was covered in water. The fridge had been leaking for a while and the power wasn't on yet. We called the company earlier that day and they said they would have to wait a week to turn it on. There was a cup of coffee left on the kitchen counter. I noticed that the locks had been recently changed and the door had obviously been broken into several times. So much that the locks were completely useless. There was this weird gap between the door and the frames. There was a horrible, horrible smell, like the stench of rotting flesh or something. My boyfriend went on to grab a few things, and I watched the kids. The house had been painted that day, and it was roasting outside. It was like the smell between paint, mold, and overwhelming smell of death. I had to open a window. I tried, he tried, but the windows were broken and painted shut. The pictures online had only been from a few years ago but this place was a train wreck. Whoever painted the house painted it quickly and got the hell out of there. It was poorly done. Even the door handles were painted. They painted the walls, ceilings, and banisters, and even the stairs this ugly, depressing salmon pink color. That instantly set me off. I think there was blood in here, I told my boyfriend. Why do you say that, he asked, dropping down more boxes onto the floor. That's the only reason to paint it this god-awful color blood will seep through the white paint eventually and it's impossible to get rid of. The only reason I know this 
is because I remember hearing about the news story where a woman took over a murder house. As I walk further into the living room, I realize that there is a huge bleach stain about two feet wide on the dark carpet. The house was lifted up so high with the garage or basement, whatever it was, below. I didn't understand how it could feel like it had been flooded or why the carpet was so badly wrinkled. We scoped out the house and went upstairs to the bedrooms. The windows were so low to the ground and hanging open and I just thought, this is not safe for our kids. There was a bucket of paint with a paint roller still left inside, randomly left behind in what would have been our bedroom. I stood by the window. It must have been four feet tall, three feet wide, with no guards and left completely open. There wasn't even a screen. I could have swore I saw a flash of light while I stared down three stories from the death trap. Call it whatever you want, but I instantly had a vision of a woman with long hair falling out the window and crashing down on the ground below. I had to get out from upstairs and just took the kids. About 10 minutes later, that smell of death was making it impossible for me to breathe. I had to go to the bathroom. We had been driving for hours that day, but the moment I stepped in, I noticed the mirrored bathroom cabinets were cracked, left open, and a toilet paper holder shoved inside. I walked in a little more and noticed red spots on the shower walls and looked as though someone had gotten out of there and did so quickly. I was about to go in, but something held me back and a little voice in my head said, don't go in the bathroom, so I didn't. My boyfriend was sitting in the car. He said it was too hot and needed some air. I looked down below out the living room window and noticed that there were groups of people walking by and making comments about someone being in the house, those people being us. I was trying to come up with every positive reason to stay here. I kept coming up with excuses like, it's not so bad, maybe it just needs a woman's touch, maybe some flowers will make it better, maybe some air fresheners, maybe like 10 bottles of air fresheners and a lot of bleach. I kept trying to convince myself by looking around and thinking about how to make it work. I opened up the closet and then peeked inside to see that it led further down behind the wall. Keep in mind, this house was probably built in the very early 1900s and is around 100 years old, if not more. It wasn't uncommon back then for secret rooms and passageways to exist. It was so hard to explain the feeling I had, but as I was about to peek around inside to see the back of the closet, something came over me. I knew that if I had gone any further, my kids and I wouldn't be alive. Everything felt so heavy and I was about to throw up. This was the closest I had ever felt in my entire life to just death and pure evil. I can't even possibly explain the amount of dread and discomfort. I was so uncomfortable. My son, who was always positive, came closer, excited and shouting, Is that another room? I got mad and pushed him out of the way a little bit and closed the door. Suddenly, the words that the landlord had told me ran through my head again. They said there was a crawl space where someone could get in. Just then, I heard something else in the house, something like someone moving around, somewhere around behind that closet area. I stood there for a moment and had an eerie thought creep into my head. You're all gonna die in here if you stay. That very thought set me in a panic with my heart pounding. I quickly grabbed the kids and ran out to the car. I could tell that my boyfriend was visibly upset with the home, giving me an opportunity to skip beating around the bush. Hey, let's just go, I told him. I was a little bit hysterical and don't remember exactly what I said, but it was something like, it will be fine, we'll find something, we don't belong here, we just need to get out, let's just go, I don't care, I'm not mad, we just need to go. He was relieved. Neither of us wanted to disappoint the other, but after talking things through, it turned out we had the same feeling of dread and death in us. He was just afraid of dying as I was. I was absolutely positive that that one night something would have killed us. I asked him to take pictures so that the landlord would know the situation. As we were leaving, we noticed that there was actually another window on the other side of the duplex, which we believe was the secret room. I heard the neighbors across the street laughing and saying something like, it looks like they're leaving. That didn't last long. We slept in the car for an hour or so at a nearby gas station because we were exhausted. I cried and then called my mom to see if we could stay the night. My boyfriend did his best to comfort me and we explained to the landlord that we didn't move in, that we had taken pictures and there was multiple health code violations. We could send them to her if she needed them. She didn't even hesitate or want to see the photos and within minutes offered to write a check for our money back. 
I swear there was something else in that house. It still terrifies me to talk about it, and I will never rent sight unseen again. I eventually googled the address to find out who had lived there before us. I found a woman's name. I googled that woman's name and found out that she was dead. She was beaten to death with a baseball bat, apparently stabbed, allegedly by her daughter and her daughter's boyfriend. They stuffed her body in a car and left it for weeks, and it was found a couple hours away. I don't believe that the news story says that the murder took place at that house. I don't even know if it was, but it still feels like it was involved somehow, or something else happened, but I'm not sure. I just know one thing, someone is hiding something, and I definitely believe that someone else was in that house.